Hi, I'm Constance Rhodes, and we're back with Kate. And you might have seen Kate's earlier two segments. If you haven't, I'd, I recommend you watch those first, and we're going to get now to talking about her husband and her. Um, want to hear from him how Kate's struggles with food impacted their relationship. So, John, first, thank you for being here. It's brave of you to come and, and talk about this, but I just want to hear from you. Um, you know, Kate has had a lot of eating issues in her life. You've been married to her for 15 years? 16 Is that years. 15, 16 years? So when did you first realize that food was an issue for Kate? Probably the, the first year of our marriage. And how did, you, how did that kind of come out? Um, the intimacy wasn't there. Um, we're supposed to be in our honeymoon stage, and we were drifting apart, mm -hmm. and then there was just something wrong, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And uh, not only being married the 16 years, we've been together since we've been 14. We oh. met in school, so I thought I knew her inside and out before mm -hmm. we got married, mm -hmm. and she really hid this from me. So how did you figure out it was the food, though? in that first year or so? Because when she would eat, it would seem to relax her, and then she would you know, wait for me to go to sleep and stuff, and there'd be dishes, and I'd buy a pie, I'd come back, and it'd be all gone. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just excuse after excuse, mm -hmm. and a lot of lying going on. Mm -hmm. But I, I loved her, and I just put that to the side. And Did you feel like it wasn't really your place to get into her food issues because that's a personal thing? I didn't really know what it was. I knew there was something. And then later on, down the line, everything started falling into place. Mm -hmm. But at the beginning, I had no idea. I had no idea she had an illness. Mm -hmm. That's what I consider it now as an illness yeah. or sickness. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would yell at her and I just didn't know. Yeah. Now, I've heard Kate say a lot of things about how much you loved her, how much you supported her, how you loved her even though she was a size that she didn't feel was good. So, I mean, how was that for you? You do love her, and I'm assuming you don't see her the way that she has seen herself. No, I've always seen her, her inner, mm -hmm. never worried about the outer. And it, it's rough being a man seeing that, but, you know, this is the one I was going to spend the rest of my life with. I was going for long term, not short term. And uh, So it really doesn't matter to you the size of her body. It really no. is who she is on the inside. No, no. But I'm sure, Kate, did you ever believe that? I never believed that. Okay. Yeah, it's hard. I, it is hard even for me to believe sometimes. I'll say to my husband, you know, are you sure? You know, this doesn't look right or whatever. Um, can we talk a little bit about intimacy? Mm -hmm. um, did you sense Kate pulling away or hiding her body from you? I mean, how did that... It was excuses, mm -hmm. waiting in the car, you know, it was just... So there wasn't time for you to be together is what you're saying? Right. Okay. So now 15 years is a long time, mm -hmm. and that's a long time for you to be in a relationship with a woman who maybe doesn't interact with you intimacy the way that you would like to. So did that lead you to want to look other places for that? It seemed when we'd fight a lot, it seemed opportunity would come up. And uh, working in the public and just the TV, what I'd watch on TV, I'd watch my sports shows and they'd have things come on the sports shows. It's just, I couldn't get away from it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had to end up getting connected to the church, men's fraternity group. So you were wrestling with um, kind of trying to fulfill the, the sexual needs that you had in other places yes. because you weren't finding that in your marriage. And so then did you sense that and did that frighten you or were you kind of like, oh good, he's getting that somewhere else? I told her outright. I oh, said, you did? look. You I'm, know, gonna ha I'm gonna have an affair. I need something. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, go. Cause I knew he wouldn't. I knew where his heart was with God and I knew he wouldn't do that. Um, but he kept pushing the issue. And then I would say, okay, and I would, be with him just to get him off my back and it would suffice for a certain amount of time and um, it was just a cycle a perpetual cycle mm -hmm. did you want on some level the intimacy and you just you did want it correct i did because that's a natural important right part I knew, of a marriage I know, but i thought it was how can he want to be with me i just didn't understand that you go be with someone else that was okay 
Um, but then if you do, I'll bring it down. Um, it'll be over. Mm -hmm. I remember when you were in the class with us, it sounded like you had finally been putting your foot down. Is that right? I mean, it was at the point where yeah, all of this, I know he won't do it, I know he won't leave me, was beginning to sort of fizzle out. So had you kind of drawn a line in the sand, or had you just reached a point where you couldn't deal with it anymore? Well, I got support from the men's fraternity group at church, and uh, we were, were right at getting a divorce. And, he was uh, going to go to Florida and I was gonna go back to Florida and move. take Caleb and um, he was going to leave me Sarah and I uh, he was really going to go and it was really that really hit me hard and I knew I had to change then he was going to leave and he was serious so in a way though it's almost like that helped push you to what you needed it, it did it, it woke her up it woke me up it did so maybe during all those years you'd been just enabling in a sense because you wouldn't address Angry, it? Angry, yelling, didn't yeah. understand, and mm -hmm. through your finding balance, I was under able to understand it was an illness. Mm -hmm. We started praying together. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, the men's fraternity group helped a lot, but just praying together and being more compassionate about it, more understanding, mm -hmm. and then it, everything just seemed to fall in place when we turned it over to the Lord. But it was like, you know, we had a listen to each other instead of fight bicker 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 i had to really listen to him and understand and then he listened to me um and even though he didn't agree he had to still listen and even though i didn't agree and we had to put out what we felt aside and listen to each other so well and i see you sitting here together mm -hmm. doing an incredibly courageous vulnerable thing and so it, i can only imagine that that God has been restoring the relationship. How is how is it different today? I'm, I mean, I know you're not completely cured from right. all your eating issues, but what are you seeing that is different in Kate today than where you were at at that point? Her heart and her attitude. And again, you know, the, the temptations that are on TV and the temptations that are out in the world and the way people are dressing now, it's just, you just have to stay focused and you have to realize what you have long term, not short term. And yeah. that you have to go the distance, that you just can't. You just have to look at the long term. Not to give up. And be committed. Even though it gets hard, you got to push through. Push we know we're going to have more hard times, but we'll get through it. Right. We've proven that. Right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out and sharing with us. And, you know, Kate and John are both going to read a letter in our letters department. So you can click at the link below and check that out. But, you know, these are real stories, and you might be out there thinking, my marriage is falling apart, my relationships aren't working, or maybe you're married to someone who struggles and you think there's nothing I can do, but there are things you can do. We want to help you find that help here. You can check out the Hope for Coping departments and the different things that we have, or you can email us. But we want to help you guys know that there is information and there is resources out there, and there is hope for more than what you're experiencing today. So thank you, Kate and John. And thank you guys for watching.